Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's Sunday, the last day of the second week of this term, which is part of the spring semester of 2022. Overall, things are going pretty well. School has not been as demanding as before, but there's still quite a bit of homework. This week for my HIM management and leadership class, we had three chapters to read. Three chapters out of this book, which is titled The Effective Healthcare Supervisor and edition. I've shared this book in the past. I think overall these two first weeks have been really heavy on reading. So this week for this particular class we had three chapters to read out of this book. We also had some reading to do out of this book but it was very minimal. The topics this week for my management and leadership class were time management, delegation, and stress. Overall, the reading out of this book is pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. I found that even though it seems to focus on healthcare, a lot of the reading in here is just general and not necessarily geared towards healthcare. There are a few healthcare examples, but nothing really significant as of now. And as I mentioned before, I have taken a management class. So a lot of the reading I've done up to now has been a review of what I read a few years ago. This book does have very good reviews on Amazon. So I am thinking there will be more material in the future that really ties to healthcare. We also had two discussions assigned this week for this class. We had two different discussions on two different topics. One of them was delegation and the other one was stress. Overall, I did enjoy the reading. I enjoyed reading about delegation. Delegation is is something that I am trying to implement as of now more in my business and also as a YouTuber, which is funny because this is a health information management class. I've never been in a manager or supervisor role. My priorities working at the local hospital for 14 years consisted of really learning as much as I could. My last phase at the local hospital was in health information management and my last role in HIM was as an outpatient medical coder and in that role my main focus and the focus of my manager was to train me and get me to a standard where I could be the most efficient medical coder on my own. Most of my years as a medical coder were focused on really absorbing everything about medical coding and learning from all the people that were around me. I was the youngest medical coder, the one with the least experience, and I had people around me that had 20 years of medical coding experience. So at that point, my role was really to absorb as much as I could and to try new things in the medical coding field. Being a manager or a supervisor never crossed my mind. One, I didn't have the experience and two, I did not have the education to pursue even a team leading position at that point in my career. Actually, a lot of the concepts of management that we are discussing, I more easily tie back to running my own medical coding business as well as now as a YouTuber. But definitely in the future, I believe this management and leadership class will come in handy because it will be applicable to my role of an instructor. I will say that at times it is difficult for me to make any connections to the material because again I haven't really had that managerial position. So a lot of what I read and the responses to the discussions are considering that I don't have any management experience and how I would handle certain situations if I would be a manager. Overall this class was pretty easy this week. It just consisted of the readings and those two discussions. And of course, the discussions also included the initial posts to the main question, and I had to post two additional replies to two of my classmates. This class does have a course project. The course project is similar to the structure of the course project I did in a previous class last term. The course project is divided into four phases. And actually, we will begin working on phase one next week. So next week, I think things will be a little bit more involved and we will be really able to apply these management concepts that we are learning about more to health information management. In regards to my HIM practicum class, that class has kept me pretty busy. We also had quite a bit of reading assigned this week. I think we had about six chapters to read out of this book, which is a lot. 
Again, as I said earlier, I feel like these two weeks have consisted of a lot of reading in both classes. The practicum class, it's not just focused on our actual on-site internship and our virtual internship, but is also focused on getting us prepared for the RHIA exam. Most of my classmates in this class are in their last semester. I still have two more classes after the semester to complete in order to graduate. Some of the material that we are having to review for the RHIA, for me at least might be a little too soon to start digging into it because of the fact that I will not be eligible to take the RHIA exam until May. And I really don't plan to take my RHIA exam in May. I believe as of now the plan is to finish my degree in late August and take my RHIA before October. Overall this class really has a lot of engagement. This is the class that has had the most students enrolled in one class. In this class, there are about 22 students compared to my HIM management and leadership class that only has 12 students. All my other classes have been really, really small as well, between 10 to 15 students. But this HIM practicum class does have about 22 students. So there is a lot going on and I can tell that a lot of these students are eager to graduate. I can also tell that they are HIM professionals that are ready to advance their careers. As of now, I have not started any of my internship assignments. I will be meeting with my director and my instructor of this class next Monday. As I stated in the last video, I will be doing an internship with my director because I want to be an instructor in HIM or HIT. I wanted to focus my on-site internship hours, which consist of 40 hours, geared towards becoming an instructor. The rest of the class completing a more traditional internship in HIM, which would mean that they would either be doing other responsibilities at their current job or they would be going to a hospital where they don't work and completing an internship in an HIM department. A lot of those students are also completing their internship remotely because of the current situation with COVID. A lot of hospitals are not allowing students to be on campus. This week for the, my HIM practicum class, we had to complete our first AHIMA VLAB assignment and it was on the Master Patient Index, the MP and we use Meditech as our EHR where we explored the master patient index via the Ahima V Lab. We had three activities to complete in the Ahima V Lab using Meditech. I have used Meditech in the past and I really enjoyed Meditech so it was nice to access Meditech again but in a different role. Our assignment this week in the Ahima V Lab consisted of learning the responsibilities of a registration clerk and really understanding the importance on training the admitting staff on how to use the master patient index and how to avoid duplicate and overlay records. We learned about how costly it is to fix duplicate and overlay records and about all the risks and potential complications that can arise from a duplicate record. Overall this week, the emphasis was on information governance. So this class is broken down into subjects based on the domains of the RHIA exam. This week, our subject was the first domain of the RHIA exam, which is information governance. And that is why we spent this whole week talking about the master patient index and the importance of of avoiding duplicate and overlaid medical records. We also had one discussion regarding the master patient index. We had a few articles to read regarding the master patient index and our discussion consisted of identifying something new that we learned while reviewing our assigned readings this week. I noticed that the discussion for this class is very engaging because we have 22 students in this class. There are a lot of posts to review and you can really see the interaction between a lot of the students and how excited they are to really voice their opinion and really also talk about the fact that most of us in the HIM field now understand that we have the knowledge to really, in this case, make an impact 
on reducing duplicate medical records or overlays. For those that don't know, a duplicate record is when you have one patient, but that patient is assigned two different medical record numbers because of the lack of identification at the time of registration. And an overlay is when you have one medical record number, but you have records from two different patients. Things can get a little complicated when care is trying to be delivered and the patient has a duplicate medical record number or the clinician is dealing with an overlay record. Overall, as I mentioned earlier, things have been pretty easy. I am eager to start my internship. I did receive a breakdown of my internship and what dates I will be meeting with my director and what the potential assignments will be once I get started. So I'm really looking forward to that and also bringing some of that information to this channel. As of today, I've completed all my homework and I have a few hours to relax before I have to start on week three, which starts tomorrow, which will probably consist of a lot more reading and more Ahima B-Lab assignments. The Ahima B-Lab assignments are actually interesting, but they are pretty time consuming. There are also associated quizzes we need to complete with those Ahima B-Lab assignments that our instructor is requiring us to submit and we are getting points for that. The Ahima B-Lab assignments count towards our virtual internship, which is also composed of 40 hours. Well, anyways, that is it for this week and I hope you are having a fantastic weekend. Thank you for watching and again, thank you for your support and I will be back next week to let you know how week three went and what I learned. See you soon.